This video is proudly sponsored by Wren. Find out at the end of this video how you can offset your carbon footprint and make this world a better place. Whenever anyone tells me that history is boring, I bring up Napoleon's penis. Napoleon Bonaparte. He's one of the most controversial leaders in world history. There's seriously like hundreds of books written on the guy. He's described by many historians as the greatest general who ever lived. When he was finally defeated in the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, the Duke of Wellington remarked, his presence on the field made the difference of 40,000 men. His personality was so magnetic that it's almost difficult to believe some of his exploits if it weren't for well-documented and contemporaneous accounts of some of the things that he did. For example, after he was dethroned as the Emperor of France and sent to live in exile on the island of Elba, he waited for the perfect opportunity to come and reclaim the throne. When his allowance got cut off and word got back to him that he was about to be banished to a place even further away, he said, F that and boarded a boat with a bunch of guys and sailed for France. By this time, a new but very unpopular king was on the throne of France. When word came back to King Louis XVIII, the terrified king declared Napoleon an outlaw and sent the 5th Regiment of his army out to arrest him. So what happens next is absolutely amazing. As Napoleon marches north toward Paris, he comes up against the 5th Regiment. Napoleon dismounts and walks straight up to them, opens his shirt to expose his chest, and essentially yells, Here I am, you wanna shoot your emperor? Shoot me, motherfuckers! A moment passes as soldiers tensely pass glances at each other. Did they really wanna do this? Nope. Then they all cried out, uh, Long live the emperor! And not only did they not arrest him, the entire regiment joined Napoleon and the men he brought with him from Elba, and Napoleon continued the march. Louis sent army after army after him, and every single one ended up joining him on the march to Paris. Napoleon had so much support. Save me, save me, hurt them, hurt them! Yes, yeah, save them, save them, hurt you, hurt you, I've got it! <laughs> that Louis ended up fleeing to Belgium before Napoleon arrived. So it's one of history's greatest ironies that the dude with the biggest balls in history had one of the tiniest penises. According to a Channel 4 documentary, his penis measured only 1.5 inches. According to the Cleveland Clinic, the average SPL, or stretched penile length, of an adult male is around 5.25 inches, with anything lower than 3 and 2 thirds inches is classified as a micropenis. You'd think that part of that may be due to Napoleon's famously short stature, which gave rise to the term Napoleon complex, which describes a man who compensates for his short stature by being overly aggressive. However, Napoleon was actually pretty average in height for the times that he lived in, being around five foot six. During his autopsy, his height was measured at five foot two. However, most experts believe that the measurements were taken in old French inches, even though France had adopted the metric system already. Compared to the soldiers he surrounded himself with, he may have seemed a little short, but he was actually pretty average in height. But how do we know his pump-action sex rifle was a sawed-off? Well, that's because Napoleon's shriveled, mummified human jerky is sitting in a tiny wooden box in New Jersey. So how did it get there? Very small. It is very small, but it's famous for being small. If there's one thing that stands out about Napoleon in all the accounts of his life, it's the repeated assertion of how much he loved the ladies. If you read his letters, especially to his wife Josephine, his hunger to sheath his sword inside of her is pretty apparent and reads kind of like an old Shakespearean MySpace post. To leave in Josephine is to leave in Isilum. To kiss her on the mouth, the eyes, the shoulders, the breast, all over, all over. I don't love you at all anymore. On the contrary, I hate you. Who can it be? This wonderful and new love who absorbs all your time, tyrannizes your days, and prevents you from caring for your husband. Take care, Josephine. One of these nights, your door will be forced, and I will be in your bed, you know. The little dagger of Otello. Okay, so this is bugging me a little bit. So let's take this measurement of 1.5 inches. I mean, it had to have been bigger when it was attached, right? 
So I'm gonna go ahead and use my expert internet medical degree and compare a raisin to a grape. So I watched this video of grapes becoming raisins and used a super accurate measurement of eyeballing it and it looks like raisins end up about 60% of the length of a grape by the time it dries. Therefore, if we take Napoleon's 1.5 inch raisin, he would have a grape the size of about 2.5 inches. And assuming he's a grower, not a shower, Google tells me that you can expect some guys to increase about 68%. Therefore, his little soldier at full attention would dive approximately 3.67 inches into the Josephine Sea, which would explain why she barely wrote him back, I guess. I love you. I mean, guys, come on, she's French. Okay, guys, I gotta admit, dicks are gross, but they're funny. I wrote this whole script completely blasted on Honey Jack on live stream. You should come <laughs> hang out with me sometimes over on twitch.tv slash nightdocsyt. Enjoy the fun. I need the attention. I drank it wrong. And if you're too elitist to watch Twitch streams, why don't you throw me a bone? <laughs> over on Patreon. <laughs> over on patreon.com slash nightdocs to increase the length of your personality. Okay, let's get back to whatever the hell it is we're doing here. And so, in the late afternoon of May 5th, 1821, the famed Emperor of France, Napoleon, lay on his deathbed. The pain he felt in his gut was so excruciating that he compared it to a knife being plunged and twisted. As he spent the last moments of his life dictating his final will and testament, being visited by loved ones and dignitaries, Napoleon died around 5.30 p.m. His son, wishing to know more about this mysterious illness that had claimed his father, requested an autopsy. An important thing to note, Napoleon at this stage in life was basically insufferable. He was beset by abdominal pains and was in a chronically bad mood due to his perceived treatment by the British for exiling him, the Emperor of France, on this remote inhospitable rock. A man by the name of Francesco Antamarchi, a physician and pathologist from Napoleon's home country of Corsica, and the abbe, Father Ange Paul Vignali, who performed his last rites, were especially bitter about having to serve this miserable, cantankerous old man. What a jerk. You're telling me. What do you say we uh, cut off his penis? Uh, so as the emperor's death loomed, they became less and less convinced that they would be compensated with a share of the Napoleonic fortune. And they were pretty bitter about the whole thing, especially the abuses they had apparently suffered under the exiled emperor. So while Antomarchi finished the autopsy, several organs had to be removed and placed in vases that had to be buried with Napoleon. Now, it's really important to note that although it's never been definitively confirmed it has also never been refuted as to what allegedly happened next. Allegedly, as Antomarchi finished the autopsy, he made one final incision and hacked off Napoleon's little general as revenge for the treatment that he'd been receiving under him while serving on the island, stuffing it inside a little box. So fast forward seven years later to 1828. The Abbe Vignali is killed in a personal feud. You are a groomer! From my point of view, you are a groomer. Then you are canceled! <laughs> and his sister, Roxanne Vignali Gentenni, inherits his estate, including several Napoleonic pieces, including the severed Harry Canary. Now, when Roxanne died, her estate passed to her son, Charles Marie Gentenni, who signed a complete list of Napoleonic relics in his family's possession in a notarized affidavit in 1916. The entire collection of artifacts was then sold to Mags Brothers, a book dealer in London, the Wang, which the French had gracefully decided to describe as a mummified tendon was also included in the collection. By 1924, the collection was then resold to ASW Rosenbach Company in Philadelphia for around 400 pounds. The now 96-year-old Charles Marie Gentenni was actually still alive to authenticate the item, in fact. The novelty of having such a whimsical piece of history was far from lost on the eccentric Rosenbach, who reveled in showing his guests the shriveled little Johnson, with his biographer John Fleming writing, Few so intimate portions of a man's anatomy have ever been displayed to so many. Hello, welcome, 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 yes, hope you're enjoying the party, yes. Stephen, hope you're doing well. Who wants to see my chicken in a box? Then, in 1927, it was put on display at the Museum of French Arts in New York City, with one newspaper describing it as a shriveled eel. By 1944, it was resold by Rosenbach to Donald Hyde of Somerville, New Jersey, 
then sold by his widow in 1969 to a private dealer named Bruce Gimmelson, and then put up for auction by Christie, Manson, and Woods that same year. In the catalog for the Napoleon collection, it describes a small dried up object genteelly described as a mummified tendon taken from Napoleon's body during the post-mortem. Unfortunately, the auction was halted due to Gimmelson objecting to the collection being broken up into separate deals. So after trying unsuccessfully to sell it to the French government, it was finally auctioned off for real in 1977 in Paris. Napoleon's Donger was finally acquired by a Dr. John K. Latimer, a prominent American urologist and medical school professor who already had a pretty crazy and wild collection, including Hermann Goering's cyanide capsule container, Hitler's hair, and the nooses that were actually used in the execution of two conspirators in the Lincoln assassination. And so finally, today, the item is owned by Dr. Latimer's daughter, Evan Latimer. She's actually shown off the item twice in two different television programs. Although she doesn't allow the item itself to be photographed, she has actually allowed the hosts of these programs to view it themselves. One of these appearances was for a really cool show called Dead Famous DNA, where a geneticist travels the world in search of DNA samples of famous historical people to sequence their genome, just to see what he can discover about these long dead world figures. Have you got the penis with you? It's got all sorts of crazy historical figures like Charles Darwin, Elvis, Marilyn Monroe, Hitler, Ava Braun, and many others. It, now, it's kind of hard to find episodes of this show online, but if you're resourceful, you can find a few episodes out there floating around if you just look hard enough. And so that is the story of Napoleon's penis. Really sorry, folks. I know it's been a long time since you've seen me. I've been in a rough state mentally and your support genuinely means the world to me. And I've actually got a few videos that I'm working on right now that I'm pretty excited about, including one where my brother and I traveled to visit a supposed alien grave. So if you want to see that early, once it's done, drop a few bucks on Patreon and you'll get to see it before anybody else once it's done. Anyway, I know the wait has been really long and hard and I'm just trying to shake off the rust right now, so just wanted to make a fun, silly little video like this one. I hope it satisfies you. Anyway, until next time. When I was in college, I worked in Alaska as a tour guide and I got to see tons of glaciers and all sorts of wonders of the natural world. One of the things that people love to see when they go out there is seeing a glacier calve, which is when a glacier loses a big chunk of its ice as it drops into the ocean. Oh yeah, more, oh that whole pinnacle is going. This is supposed to be a much rarer event than it really is, and quite frankly, we're losing so much ice in this world that seeing a glacier calve is becoming far more common. I haven't been able to visit in a long time, and I have to say the thought of visiting again and seeing it all gone is simply terrifying. And with that in mind, I'm proud to be sponsored today by the wonderful folks at REN. REN is a simple way that you can personally make a difference in the global climate crisis, where you can go to their website to calculate your own carbon footprint and help offset it by funding different carbon reduction projects that they support. To see your own carbon footprint, you just answer some simple questions and see what you can do to reduce your own personal carbon footprint. If you sign up for a monthly contribution, you can get regular updates and photos of where your money is going and the actual difference you're personally making for this precious world that we all live in. One of my favorites is Amazon Rainforest Protection. The Amazon jungle is a miracle to still have on this planet, with some of the darker forces on Earth doing everything that they can to strip it all away from us. It's vital that we conserve this wonder of the natural world, a place where we still haven't even discovered all of the animal species who live there. So please, follow the link below and start off setting your own carbon footprint and help build a better world for not just you and me, but all of us.